Hallelujah. I want you to grab your Bible. Oh my God. And go with me over to 1 Kings chapter 17. more than 
antagonist more than just a, a, a person who did not believe in God, but he believed in antagonizing those who did believe in God. So this older lady would tell him every day and tell him how good the Lord is, and she would tell him, you know, how, and he's like, I don't know how you can do it. It looked like you ain't got much, and you, you're always struggling. It seemed like you always in problems. And then one day, the lady was going through something where she really was struggling, and she, and she began to talk about the goodness of the Lord, and the man told her, he said, I don't see, the neighbor told her, I don't see how you can say how good. She said, well, God is going to provide according to all his riches and glory. He's going to provide. I need groceries. I know God is going to provide those groceries. And then, then the man's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then he left and, and he went to the grocery store. I'm going to show this old lady hallelujah, that God ain't going to provide anything. Hallelujah. So he went and bought groceries and he brought the groceries and put it on the porch and, and knocked on the door and ran and hid in the bushes and, and she came to the door and said, my God, look what God has provided. He's provided abundantly. He gave me everything I need for this season in my life. I thank God for it. He jumped out of the bush and said, Aha, old lady. It wasn't God who gave you this. And the old lady looked at him and smiled and began to shout and dance and cut a rug a little bit deeper. Because he said, what's wrong with you? Don't you know that I'm the one who brought you these things? She said, no, it's not that. It's that the God provided and he made the devil bring it. What you said, yes. You got to have an understanding about the God that we serve. The word of God clearly says that he will compel. Oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. My God, my God. I offer for your focus the verses that are found in 1 Kings 17, in particular verse 5. And I minister to you, compelled to be a blessing. Yes. Compelled to be a blessing. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, sometimes sometime. those people that don't like you are going to be the ones that bless you. Yes. All turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Sometimes, sometimes people who don't like you is going to be the very person that's going to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. Hallelujah. If you believe that you receive that, you ought to clap your hands to the Lord. How do you receive that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this passage, we find the great prophet Elijah. Elijah was speaking forth something that God had placed on him to tell a king whose name was Ahab. Oh, we know who Ahab was. Ahab was the epitome of what not having a spine was. Ahab was a man who presided over Israel during a very wicked time in Israel's existence. And as usual, this king was about serving himself and not about serving God or the people of God. This particular king was not a stranger to us because this king is used to describe when you call a man henpecked. When you call a man, uh, I ain't gonna say it, when you call a man henpecked, when you call a man uh, totally sold out for what his wife and wants to please what his wife says and not hear what God has to say about the situation. Hallelujah. This king, the particular king named Ahab, was married to the queen of Nagy. He was married to Hillary Clinton. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. He was married to the queen of Nagy. A name which we will not find even in today's society where many people will name their children not considering the impact of a name. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because names have power that are associated with it. But I'm telling you, in this day and age that we're in, because recently, not too many years ago, a young lady decided to name her child, uh, uh, it was a name, uh, it wasn't Emmanuel, it just blew me away. She wanted to call him King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Huh? She wanted to call him a name that was reserved for Christ himself. Huh? And it, it blew my mind. But in this day and age where a lot of people don't really understand the purpose and the meaning of name, my great fear, Sister Sam, you're going to have some Jezebel Williamses around here. Jezebel Smiths. Jezebel Jones Johnsons. Huh? In, in this day and age, not realizing the power that's in a name. Oh, yes. did you hear that? Yes. The power that's in the name. The same as there's power in the name of Jesus, there's power when it's placed in your name. There's certain attributes.
attributes that, that are attributed to you if you have the right name or the wrong name. Oh, my God, my God. Because once you learn what that name means as a child, you begin to seemingly act out the story of your name. My God, my God, my God. What I want to look at is the mindset or the lack of mindset about these crows, these ravens. <coughs> What mindset did they have when they were blessing the man of God? It said that not only did they bring him meat, but they brought him bread. Well. Now, it's one thing, you know, and the skeptic can say, well, the ravens are, are scavenged creatures and be, they just happen to come by with some of their fresh kill. That'd be a lie. But what about bringing bread? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, my God. They brought meat and bread. My God, my God, my God. So, as I began to look at this thing and, and consider this thing, I realized, I realized that God is saying that, look, 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 there is nothing on the earth realm that I cannot make into a blessing for you. Amen. Huh? See, the enemy has things that he has thrown out there, stumbling blocks he has thrown out there, but God said each and every stumbling block, I can make that stumbling block a stepping stone. Amen. God says that what the enemy meant for your bad, I'm going to yes. turn that yes. thing around. Hallelujah. Yes. God says that though it may seem as if there's chains holding you down, I'm going to break those chains and I'm going to utilize those chains. I'm going to melt those chains down and they're going to become the keys to your car. Come on. Oh my Hallelujah. God, my God, my God. Thank you. Hallelujah. As I realized this, I realized that the word of God says in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and guess what all those things will be what added unto you not subtracted from you not taken away from you but those things will be added unto you and get this he's going to add those things unto you from the strangers of places yes. Hallelujah. 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 see sometimes when we're looking for our blessings at work we think the blessings should come, come from but God moves in mysterious ways his yes, wonders to behold. God will bless you from a very unlikely source if you just trust him. Hallelujah. Because God wants to show somebody in this day and in this age that he is not only the God of all good, but he's also the God of what's bad. And everything is compelled to be a blessing by God. Hallelujah. Don't you know that the enemy has to seek God's permission before he even does anything to you? So who do you think that he's really serving overall? He has to serve God. And when he comes into God's presence, he doesn't come into God's presence with his chip on his shoulder, with his chest out. He comes before God's presence and he has to bow before God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My mind keeps going back though to Elijah and the ravens. Thank you, Just what does a raven have to be do with being blessed? In the Old Testament, it talks about certain things that we should need. A raven's one of them. Uh -huh. Because of their nature, because of their character. And, and a raven will eat human flesh if the chance affords itself. Because it's a scavenger type of bird. Let's examine it. They are vile creatures. They are despicable creatures who have a tendency to eat any dead flesh that they come upon. No one would ever expect to have a raven on the menu. No matter how deep into the woods you go, no matter how far into the woods you go, no culture will eat a raven. Ravens are often used to illustrate a desolate place, a desert place. One would find ravens as as foretellers of gloom or in the same class or worse than a bull weevil or any other type of animal or insect that is there to destroy you. Oh. Hallelujah. But in this illustration here, we see the ravens being used to bless the man of God. Yes. Oh, I'm feeling that's that, my God. It. We see the ravens being used to bless the man of God. The ravens probably would have preferred to pluck his eyes out. And I can hear the ravens even saying to themselves, if I had a choice, I would rather eat him. But I have no choice because this God that I serve, oh my God, he has compelled me to be a blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. I myself, if I was Elijah, I would ask the Lord, maybe you could have had something clean to bring it to me. 
Or Lord, maybe you should have had something that I could have ate come down. But in this situation, we see the sovereign nature of God. We see that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and the call according to his purpose. In this situation, we see where God has suspended the very laws of nature and caused nature to work in your favor. Somebody need to hear what I'm saying. There's some storms that are out there in your life that God is going to cause those storms to blow your blessings in from the harbor. You worry about the storm blowing away what you have, but God is saying that, guess what? As long as you keep your soul anchored in me, I'm going to cause the blessings to be blown over you. See, when you're in the favor of God, they're all things physical, all things natural, all things supernatural, all things animate, all things inanimate. The Bible confirms that everything works together to bless you. Right, right. Hallelujah. In Romans 8, 28, we see two things that must be in order for the natural and the supernatural to work, as well as animate and the inanimate to work at your bidding. I know that some of you are thinking now, Pastor Schaefer, I can get with the natural. I can understand the supernatural. I can even accept the animate. But the inanimate, what are you saying? The inanimate object is something that does not live. But Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain, which is an inanimate object, and command that mountain to be cast into the sea. As you pass it in the way, and the mountain gets in your way, you can have the faith the size of a mustard seed and tell that mountain, get out of my way, get into the sea, or you won't be a hindrance on the inside. So when I come back this way, my God, my God, hallelujah. We see the ravens being compelled to be a blessing. Hey, hey. The word compel, which root word is compel, means to force, means to drive, to make it necessary. Compel compared to propel is that being propelled, you would have a choice in the matter. Propel allows you more freedom. You propel your car for it. You propel a ball into a hoop. Compel means you have no choice. You are forced to do this. That's right. That's right. So I stood there realizing that the Lord was opening my understanding anew. Remind me of the fact that when you cast all your cares at him, everything in nature bows down before you. You can speak to the live things and the things that are not alive. You can speak to those dry bones in a valley and command flesh to come upon those dry bones. When you're serving the Lord, you can speak, hallelujah, to what seems to be absolutely nothing, which is the wind, and tell the wind to blow into the lungs of what brings the word dry bones. You need to hear what I'm saying. When you are serving the Lord with all your heart, he makes all of nature work together. It says that the earth is waiting, groaning for you to speak forward to it. Hallelujah. It reminds me of the fact that all is subject to our domain. And all is definitely subject to what God says. And God says God can and will use anything he has to to bless those that he loves and serve him. The raven was compelled to bless the man of God. The raven did not want to bless the man of God, but because the authority of God Almighty, because of El Shaddai who spoke, because of Jehovah Jireh who spoke, because of Jehovah Nisi spoke, because of Jehovah El had spoken, that raven was compelled to be a blessing. Can I speak to someone here? There are some things in your life you've been looking at in the wrong way. Oh, help. You've been looking at it in the wrong way. Help. And you don't realize that that thing is there not only to remind you to serve God. But that thing is there where God wants you to take that thing and take it and shape it. Mm -hmm. And make it, oh my God, can I speak? Oh, Listen, speak. we had a tree in our front yard. Was bought in the grass. Wouldn't let the grass grow and we decided, well, we got to cut this thing down. Uh-huh. So I'm out there cutting that thing down and cut it down and and as we cut it down, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with the wood. And then the Lord said, Don't you remember you got a fireplace? <laughs> so what was a problem had a purpose. Oh my God, my God! See, sometimes your problems have purposes, but you're missing. You're missing. Your problem will have a purpose. See, your problem sometimes are there to make you understand just how good God is. Sometimes your problems are there to make you understand He is a sovereign God. He's a righteous God. He's an on time God. He's a God that can do anything but fail. Sometimes your problem should not be what you focus on. You ought to focus on how to turn your problems around to be a purposeful God. 
Hallelujah. I say this that the man was blessed. The raven was compelled to bless him. I said it's because the word says so. And because the nature of the raven, one cannot find a tendency to want to do anything for man. And then we look at the other story in the book of Numbers. Now it's one thing now. The raven brought meat and he brought bread. He brought meat and brought bread. But he was not the meat nor was he the bread. But the story in Numbers where the quail were blown from the sea out over the camp of Israel. And it surrounds the camp of Israel because it said it was a day's walk on all sides of the camp. Mm -hmm. There was meat everywhere. Mm. Huh? Mm. And, and, and the thing is that the ravens, one thing, they brought meat. They were not the meat. Mm -hmm. But the quails were the meat. Mm -hmm. Huh? The quails were the meat. They, they basically ignored basic survival instincts that's innate in every animal. They ignored the survival instinct, my God, my God. So they became the sacrifice. They sacrificed themselves for what God has said to This goes against all the nature and the place. But when the quails gave their all, so the children of Israel would eat me. In the story, we see God. We see God showing once again that he's God all by himself. That he's a God with emotion. He loves. He hates. He hurts. He cries. He desires. He, he's angry at times. He influences. He compels. People you come in contact with are sometimes putting your lives to bless you. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're putting your lives to bless you. That's you don't right. even know it. That's right. Huh? Because they're compelled by God to bless you. That boss who was angry at you, who seemed to be angry at you about something. That boss who was always pushing you to get to know a certain thing, a certain task. Huh? See, sometimes what, what you find out is that people who seem to hate you really don't hate you. And they're trying to work with you to bring you up to the next level. But if you have a focus on the problem, and not the process. You'll miss what God has for you to do. Hallelujah. The beauty of being within God's will and being obedient to him, man will give unto you, and lots of times they don't even know why they're blessing you. Anybody had that happen before? Like, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm blessing you. Call you begrudgingly. Come get this job. Don't even know why they're doing it. Call you begrudgingly. Well, I got something for you. Don't know why they are doing it, but because God has commanded blessings into your life. My God, my God. Don't even know why you got the job. There's no way you wasn't even qualified for the job. But God commanded your blessings to come to you. My God, my God, hallelujah. God put his supernatural influence on your resume. My God, hallelujah, oh my God, my God. And when you're blessed by this, and Sister Sims, I know you understand where I'm coming from. Yes. People who are not even in the body of Christ, yes, ain't even thought about getting into the body of Christ. That's the farthest thing from their mind is getting oh. saved and sanctified and filled with yes. the Holy Spirit. That's far from their mind. But God says bless. He says bless. He says, bless. When you in the favor of God, oh my God, there's a scripture that says that, that give and it shall be given back to you. How? Press down. How? Shake together. How? Run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom? Anybody knows it just says men, but it means men or women. But what I noticed was it didn't say black men. Didn't say white men. Didn't say Asian men. Didn't say Christian men. Didn't say Muslim men. Didn't say saved men, unsaved men. It didn't say any of that. It said that they would be compelled to be a blessing to you. My God, my God, my God, my God. People don't understand the favor principles that are on your life because God has commanded blessings your way. My God, my God. They don't understand. They're like, oh my God, they don't know how you got what you got. But when God ordains and what he ordains, he will bless. He will bless what he ordains. I... I've been a person who's seen that many times in my life. I've seen where people 
would do things for me and they don't even know why they're doing. Mm. They would go out of their way. And I was told one time that when I went on board with the Postal Service, I was told one time, well, uh, I know you probably get that first big pay raise, but you won't get the next one. They don't do that. Yeah. They won't do that. And no, they, they normally give everybody 10% starting off just to make you feel good. Uh -huh. But the next one, they don't cut it off to about three or four. How about the next one, 15%? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is the type of God that we serve. Yeah. When you in the seemingly the midst of a hopeless situation. Huh? Elijah was in the middle of a hopeless situation. Yeah. God told him to go, not go out into the desert area. He told him to go out to a place where it wasn't really a river. He said a brook is rolling. Huh? He said go beyond the Jordan River and go to this brook. Now if a river dries up, how much more you think a brook going to dry up? He told him to go to this place which seemed silly to us in our natural mind. He said go to this place, that place that's void of vegetation because there's not enough water to sustain vegetation. Go to this place, a place that's void of wildlife. You ain't going to find no rabbits to eat there, Elijah. Go to this place because I'm going to command all of nature to be a blessing to you. My God, my God. Hallelujah. When the favor of God is upon you, people come to you out of the blue fishing and trying to understand why you have joy in the midst of the storm. When the favor of the Lord is upon you, they, the, and the blessings are coming from all directions, hallelujah, people will be wondering how you made it over. Oh, my God, my God. The devil was even wondering how you made it over. That's why he's using people to ask you how you did it. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm in a season of favor in my life right now. Hallelujah. I'm in the midst of a season of favor in my life that is mind-blowing. My God, it's mind-blowing how the Lord is blessed. And you need to understand the Bible tells us, oh my God, my God, if you serve the man or woman of God that you're underneath, when the favor falls upon them, you're going to be in favor too. Somebody needs to get into the limelight of the flavor. My God, my God. Bless you. Hallelujah. Yes. When the favor of the Lord is upon you, he'll move heaven and earth mm. to work things out for your good. My Lord. Hallelujah. When the favor of the Lord is upon you, God will stop all the work he's doing to come to your rescue. Mm. You see, when God favors upon you, he compels sinners to bless you. He compels saints to bless you. He compels objects. He compels entities. He compels organizations. He compels mayors. He compels senators. He compels governors. He compels presidents. He compels prime ministers. He compels all things to bless you. Oh, my God, my God. I'm, I'm hearing the song in my spirit. It's already getting better. It's already getting easier. God's already moving in my behalf. Hallelujah. Right when you think that it's over. Right when you are at the edge of your seat. Said, I don't know how I'm going to make it to the next step. Hallelujah. Right when you at that point of giving up. And not only throwing in your towel. Finding someone else's towel to throw in. Hallelujah. You at the edge. You at the edge of calling and quits all together. This is when you need to look toward the hill from which comes your help. Yes, this is when you need to trust God even more than you trusted him before. This is when your faith needs to grow stronger and your profession of faith needs to grow stronger and say, Lord, I need more of you. This is when you don't quit. You don't give up. You don't give in. You say, Lord, I'm going to walk around my circumstance. I'm going to walk around my situation. I'm not going to languish in it. I'm going to step on the outside of it, and I'm going to believe you, God. My God, my God. Nobody but you, God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm thanking God for all the favor that's on my life right now. And I'm thanking God that I'm not concerned in how he's going to do it. I'm just going to trust that he's going to do it. Hallelujah. Somebody tell the Lord, I thank you. Tell the Lord I thank you. Tell the Lord I believe you. I believe you. Tell the Lord I'm going to have my blessing. I'm going to have my everything. He's going to do some things in my life. My God, my God. Hallelujah. 
When you have God on your side, he's more than what the world against you. When God is on your side, even the enemy bows down and blesses you. When God is on your side, somebody said, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Lord, I believe you. Somebody said, Lord, I receive it. Hallelujah. Oh, come on now. Get deep into it. Say, Lord, I thank you for healing me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for blessing me. I thank you for keeping me. Hallelujah. In the midst of my storm, oh God. Hallelujah. When you trust him, hallelujah. When the Lord is your shepherd, hallelujah. You shall not want, hallelujah. When he's your shepherd, he will allow you to rest in a time of an unrestful situation, hallelujah. When he's on your side, you shall drink from a living pool of water, a spiritual water that is calm. When God is on your side, you find that you don't have to run through the valley of the shadow of death. You can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You can take your time and not stumble while you're there. You can walk out the rock, hallelujah, and rest in completely. When God is on your side, Understand. The 
tell you how good he is. Everyone knows the story of the time when I had the heart attack, supposedly. Everyone knows that story. It was 2013, and we had just moved into this building here. Hallelujah. So it's been seven, six years, seven years. Hallelujah. it be seven, six years next year, right? Hallelujah. But let me reiterate, because some were not here and don't know, don't know this part of the story. How, when I was in the Army, my primary care physician had told me I was going to have a heart attack. So this guy who had been my primary doctor five or six years prior to me getting out of the Army, who knew my medical history, we were in Virginia together, turned around, I'm sitting in the emergency room in Memphis at Baptist, laying on a gurney, and who but him walks around the corner. <laughs> Do not think that God will not bless you at your deepest, darkest moment when you're about to give up. I tell you, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. Hold on to his unchanging hand. The same God that delivered you yesterday is the same God that's ready to deliver you in your situation now. Now think back over your life and think about how good God has been to you. Hallelujah. When other people threw you out, when other people did not want to be bothered with you, when other people cast you aside, his loving hand made sure that you had more than enough to eat. He made sure that you had enough shelter where you did not starve and you did not freeze to death. This is the same God. Hallelujah. Who's ready to bless you right now. Hallelujah. Come on, plug y'all, so let's get our prayer in here. Oh, 